You may remember from last time that I said there were three types of concentrations or three ways to express concentrations. There was parts per million, there was percent concentration, and we could break that down into various subtypes, and then there was molar concentration. And today, our topic is molar concentration. Now, what I told you uh, then, I'm going to say it again because I repeat myself all the time anyway, is that when we say concentration in chemistry, most often we mean molar concentration. And again, just a quick reminder, it was the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. And I'm sorry that the one and the liters kind of got broken up over two lines, but you can handle it. And I also mentioned, which I'll say again, only really old guys use the term molarity. But it's a term that you'll still see kicking around once in a while, because I slip up once in a while. So the one that we're going to be using is the formula with the C for concentration. And that probably just to make sure that we don't get mixed up with molar mass or something else. But once in a while, you'll probably see me slip and use capital M for molarity. And we can do a triangle. Now, I want you to pay particular attention to A, the position of the N, the number of moles, because with the molar mass and number of moles and mass formula, number of moles was one of the bottom corners. Now it's on the top corner, which means when we start using both triangles, at this, either in the same question or in different questions, but in, you know, roughly in the same time, we're going to need to keep straight what they are. Now the good news is, if you think about the units, it's all taken care of. But if you pay attention to the units, really, really important. So let's move on and let's use that triangle. So we'll just jump right into some questions that you're going to see. The question might say, what is the concentration? It might say molar concentration, but probably it's just going to say, what's the concentration? Well, we look at our triangle. We look at the units that we have and what we need and what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find moles per liter, but we are cover up C. We need number of moles on top and volume on the bottom. And that volume must be in liters, and in this case it is. So I just dump it into the formula, and it comes out with an answer of 0.36 moles per liter. Now, you'll sometimes see that written as moles slash liters, and that's fine too. OK, another kind of question, which again, if, if you didn't do it for the first one, eh, go back. But make sure you you've pause this, run the numbers, make sure that you understand or you've seen it, you've tried it on the calculator, and it all works out. OK, what's the concentration if I have a smaller volume, 650 milliliters, and 0.35 moles of solute? Now, you have to have number, sorry, volume in liters, which means our first job, when we're starting to use that formula, is to convert liters sorry, milliliters into liters, and you're going to divide by 1,000. Okay? Now, you don't have to set it up like that. You don't have to even show that work, but you do have to convert the liter, milliliters rather into liters. I'll get it right eventually. Then you solve for concentration. Number of moles on the top, volume on the bottom. There's your answer, moles per liter, 0.54 moles per liter. All right, we could also have uh, something else. What about mass? Now here's the thing, and you'll, you've heard me say this before, when in doubt, answer the question. You're trying to find concentration. To find concentration, you need number of moles on top, volume on the bottom. I've got volume. I don't have number of moles. How do I find moles? Well, I've got a mass. So I know how to use mass to find number of moles. So I go to my other triangle, and I'm first going to solve for number of moles. So number of mass over molar mass gives me number of moles. And then, now that I know the number of moles, I can use that to calculate concentration. It's too easy. It's just keeping track of the units and knowing what to do. And then, if you don't know what to do, see what you need to have for each one of those formulas. All right, what about this? What mass? So now, if I was trying to make the solution, 840 milliliters of solution of 0.15 moles per liter, I need to know how much stuff to add. Well, let's see. I'm trying to find a mass. And I know one way to find mass. Mass is number of moles times molar mass. I have molar mass because I've got a chemical formula. I don't have number of moles, but I have a solution. So using the solution information, I can calculate number of moles. All right? When in doubt, answer the question, but pay attention to the units. So I first calculate number of moles, concentration times volume. Volume must be in liters. And then I use that number of moles in my molar mass 
to find mass formula. And then I get a final answer for mass, paying attention to the units all the way through. Now this one is a little bit different because in this one I am starting with a solution and I'm finishing with a solution. The solute is the same, but what's happening is I'm adding water. Well, as I add water, think about uh, starting out with juice and adding water. As you add water, the total volume goes up, but the concentration goes down. The juice gets more watery. But the amount of juice, or in this case, the amount of solute, will stay the same. The number of moles of solute will stay the same. So the number of moles before adding water will equal the number of moles after adding water. Now I'm going to show you one way, and then I'm going to kind of tuck it in and a little bit simpler, uh, a little bit smaller down at the bottom. Okay, so I calculate my number of moles that I started with, because that's what I have enough information for. And then the number of moles mm -hmm. after will be the same. So now I'm trying to figure out my new concentration. I have a new volume, I have the original number of moles of solute, and now I need the concentration. So I solve for that. Now I can set it up this way. So rather than doing it in two distinct steps, I could kind of run it in one step. And we'll do examples of that in class, if that's a little fuzzy for you right now. That's it. There's not too much more I can ask. There's not too many more things I can do. That's molar concentration. Now I can start using molar concentration in stoichiometry because now I have a way of going from volumes of solutions to moles of solutes and from moles of solutes to volumes. Right, I can do those kinds of conversions. Right, that's what molar concentration allows me to do, which means stoichiometry is coming. And you knew it was going to happen. Anyway, we'll talk to you in class and we'll try a bunch of these in, in there. Talk to you then.